growing up in North Georgia, there's not much of a Catholic community there. So there was really no natural pull towards church or church activities um, just because there wasn't a lot of people my age that were doing that. Well, I wasn't raised Catholic like most seminarians. Um, I was raised in a Protestant household with mom and dad and two older brothers, and I was raised Protestant until uh, it was about eighth grade, eighth grade year that we left our church, and we decided to go to the Catholic church that was just five minutes down the street. As I was headed into my first year of college, I kind of felt this, this pull because I'd seen my one of my older siblings, my older brother, um, actually entered the seminary himself, and then my whole family from that just started to to take their faith life. We were taking our faith seriously, but just like deepen it. Like there's actually so much more here. At that time, I kind of started getting involved in my the campus ministry at my at the university I was attending. I played football there, and so I was like kind of caught up in the in the football world in the locker room. And then there was also like the Newman Center um, that was kind of like. It's pulling me both ways, right? And I was trying to bring trying to bring my Newman Center life, my Catholic life into the locker room, but that was I didn't always win that battle, you know, and, and, and then vice versa, like it was trying to bring guys into the Newman house and like trying to build up the culture, but yeah, it's a battle. It truly was a battle. When I was in church, when I would walk into the churches um, around my my hometown, there was this overwhelming sense of peace and joy that just welled up inside me. And it was something that I really couldn't explain, but it was something that I couldn't ignore. There was just always something special about mass that I really didn't understand what it was. But I feel like God kind of gave me those graces to recognize um, how special the mass actually is. The second semester of my sophomore year, my two older brothers and my cousins and I um, decided to join this huge fad which was called uh, Exodus 90, which was big at the time. One of the practices of Exodus 90 is to pray 20 minutes each night before either the Blessed Sacrament or the Crucifix. And so I did that um, pretty consistently. I've never had a prayer experience like that, and I'd never encountered our Lord in that. And I felt really like I was being, I was being spoken to by our Lord each night. I just realized a bunch of fruit came out of those three months just in, in prayer and asceticism, and more specifically in freedom. Experiencing freedom, but then experiencing a, a time of just like a doubt and, and different, different struggles. Um, I definitely felt a conviction to pursue that relationship with, with Christ. I started reading a Bible study, I just remember thinking like, I remember, I remember coming out and I got to talk to one of the guys um, about Jesus. He was having a really hard time and like was just caught up in some sins and just, and just the pressures of the world and, and, and family life. And I remember getting to share with them the truths of, 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 of God's love for us and also like how he's there for us and present. And, and I remember like sitting in my car just being like, all right, there's nothing better than this. Whenever I got into high school, um, I, I hadn't really thought much about the priesthood, uh, maybe a little bit, um, but, but you know, I just kind of forced it to the back of my mind until the, uh, my junior year of high school, I went to NCYC in uh, Indianapolis. And it was then that I recognized that I wasn't alone in my faith and that uh, there was something that I was a part of that was much, much larger than, than just myself. And it was in that moment that it just kind of sparked something inside of me that was um, unavoidable. It was, it was probably then when I realized, you know, that this is, this is where God's calling me. There would just be different situations and encounters with other people where they would, they would either mention or say the word priest, and my heart would jump at that. And I did not know, like, what to do with that. I was so confused and a little scared. I might be called to the priesthood. A good friend of mine saw that maybe there might be a call there, and so he encouraged me we have a spiritual director and to, to discern seriously with the help of a priest. And so I did the beginning of my senior year and that was probably one of the best decisions I made for my discernment was just to, to figure out if this was what God was calling me to. And eventually, um, end of my senior year, I ended up getting an application and um, now I'm here at Conception in my second year. 
Time went on, I ended up becoming a focused missionary and then and then I was trying to figure out, okay, well I stay as a missionary, well I go to you know, seminary. It's just like this draw to to go deeper in my own knowledge of the Lord, my own relationship with the Lord. Um, yeah, I just kind of overtook my desire for outreach, as, as odd as that may sound. And it was like the Lord was inviting me to say, like, James, I need you to go deeper. I need you to like to be with me more and more and more so that like one day you can actually pour out more and more of yourself. Um, and so, uh, praise God, I got sent here. And so now I'm here. Um, I didn't go to seminary right away. I went to college for a couple years. Um, just in my hometown and then there was just something about being there that I, I recognized that I wasn't being fulfilled. Um, God was not the center of my life and I recognized that that was wrong and so I figured out what I needed to do and I'm here and this is my senior year and I have never been happier. <laughs>